Y'all ready for this? What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Widmer here, and welcome into another edition of MVP Games Live right here on twitch.tv backslash MVP vids. I am joined, as I always am, with my beautiful co-host, Soapy Muffin. Hi, guys. Or should I call you Sponge Muffin? Which you know, it's, it's, whatever, it's, it's whichever one goes. Well, I'm going to call you Soapy Muffin so I don't have to uh, make a new graphic for you. But Soaps, how you doing today? I, I, I haven't talked to you in a while, and I feel like you don't have to go in much detail like you did for me before the show. But I want you to basically give the listeners a little bit of a gist of why we missed our show yesterday. Uh, my cat made my fucking router explode. <laughs> Your cat was like, nope, fuck this, Soaps. You don't get to talk about games today. Yeah, my cat was like, I hate games live anyways. <laughs> it and takes like, the on, attention man. off of me. I mean, to be fair, it's the cat that doesn't like me, so. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, It's cat. really just I had nope now. You said that one's your brother's cat, right? Well, I mean, all technically all of them are my brothers. Yeah, but there's, but... there's one that really likes you, right? Well, yeah, well, because that's Pepper, and Pepper loves me, but that's besides the point. I thought I thought her name was Peppermint. I don't know why I thought no, it's, it's just Pepper. was Peppermint. The three cats are Pepper, Sage, and Cinnamon. Oh, sage and Cinnamon. Going with a very, like, uh... Spice uh, theme? Spice theme, yeah. <laughs> don't worry, I've, never, I've heard nonstop about Spice since they've been born, so... <laughs> Sugar, Spice, and everything nice, right? That's, that's the Powerpuff Girls. Except they're all assholes. <laughs> Except the, even Pepper, who likes Soapy. yeah. Yeah, dude, because Pepper's the troublemaker now. Uh, I thought uh, for a while, I'm like, oh, my Pepper's going to be the reasonable one. You know, the one that just wants love. No, no Pepper's an asshole. No, no, she just wants to get on your good side that, so that uh, she can do whatever she wants. But you guys aren't here to talk cats. You guys are here for us to talk games. And before we get into everything, let's go through a little bit of housekeeping. Number one, the Discord. Make sure you join it. It's a great place for all the real MVPs to come together and talk about whatever it is that you want link down below on YouTube on Twitch exclamation discord um, get you that link live in Twitch chat um, also patreon.com backslash MVP vids is how you help support the channel um, thank you to our patreon sponsors Pat Hill and Philly Sean and then last but not least we do the show live every day Monday through Friday on twitch.tv backslash MVP vids however you can always catch it on MVP Entertainment if you ever miss a show. But Soapy, let's get into what we're talking about today. And I'll be honest, a lot of this is what we were going to talk about yesterday because there wasn't a lot of news um, that happened in the gaming world from last night to today. So we are starting off the show proper with Madden 21 talk because Soapy, there was a hashtag that was trending that still is trending um in some way and the hashtag was nfl drop ea i also watched a video of the pat mcavee show talk about this they brought in i think it was darius butler um to talk about madden and he even said he didn't even buy this year's madden because he got burned from it last year now madden and the our nfl and the ea have an agreement they just signed that goes through 2026 so soapy I want to turn to you. I have not bought Madden yet. Usually I buy Madden every year. I have not bought it yet. This is the longest holdout that I have had of a Madden game thus far. I don't know if and when I am going to buy it this year. But for you, Soapy, you have it. You've been playing it. You've been ultimate teaming it up. What are your thoughts of Madden so far? And are you getting behind the NFL drop EA train on Twitter? So I do have to preface my point with, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't, I haven't played a Madden since like, a like Madden 15. Yeah. So, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt, because obviously, you know, I've missed a few years. Mm -hmm. It, it hasn't been bad, but that's also probably because I haven't experienced the same game over and over again for like mm. the last six years. Yeah, it hasn't been playing. It hasn't felt like playing a recovered copy of the year before. Yeah, because at least from 14 to now, there's been enough change that I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Like, mm -hmm. uh, there's something different. Yeah. 
but so far i haven't hated it the story mode is actually kind of good except the actual story portion itself because uh, it's a little fucking weird mm-hmm. how uh, this guy with half a heart apparently uh, is it better than a quarterback that dropped 105 points in a fucking game but you know fuck me apparently talking about your quarterback now not everyone's dropping 105 out there soaps well, I mean, it doesn't help they put the campaign on rookie, and you can't yeah. change until you make the fucking pros. So. Really? It's on rookie until the pros? <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's to make you look really good. Mm. It's to get your confidence up, and then when you change the difficulty, and you end up on the Bears like I did. <laughs> but you're a quarterback. You so you're a quarterback. Sean was the wide receiver, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys at least got the position you actually need here. Yeah. But that's besides the point. <laughs> at least you don't have to... Uh, at least you don't have to um, get the ball thrown to you from Mitch Trubisky. You just have to take his job. Yeah, but I mean, it's been <clears throat> fine. Ultimate Team is basically the same. Mm-hmm. Like Ultimate Team has never really changed, but at the same time, it, it's such a tried and true like method of how to do it. Like, there's not much you need to change. Yeah, obviously, I, d- I think it's. Go ahead, finish your point. I cut. I, w- I was cutting you off. Oh no, it was a uh, in. In one of the discords, it was uh, I dropped the uh, screenshots, uh, mm-hmm. or I dropped the picture of when I when I basically sniped a Jerry Rice, yeah, and sold it on my call. And I wrote the stupidest fucking thing I've ever put in a Discord chat of uh, <laughs> "Call me the motherfucking Pillsbury Doughboy." Yeah, I didn't get that when you fucking said that. I was like, oh, okay, all right. I mean, call me the Pillsbury Doughboy because I got dough. Oh, okay. No, I, you, that's I, what I like, thought you meant. Like, huh? He's got a lot of coins. Is that what he's talking about? I didn't really understand it when you put it. Yeah, and then it was when Jake told me basically just grind one challenge and you can get to fucking level 50 in like an hour. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I'm like, do I really want to do that? Like, would that ruin my experience? Hey man, but- hey man Jake's, Jake's the kind of guy where like he finds the, he finds the way to, hey, I'm going to grind out these levels, but you might want to kill yourself while and after doing it. Yeah, no, I did I did the challenge like five times, and I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore, but I leveled up once by doing it, and so I'm like, fuck it, dude, I gotta just keep doing it. Yeah, Jake is, but, uh, that's the kind of person Jake is when it comes to these games. Yeah, and, because obviously, like I said, Ultimate Team, it's fine, tried true method and everything. Mm-hmm. Career, okay, I haven't really ventured into any of the other modes so far, I've just yeah. kind of stuck to those two. But you've but like, actually played. Okay. You've actually played the game, though. Like you've yeah. played games of it to where, like, I'll ask you since I haven't played it, has it seemed to you like, are there anything glitchy? I know you were talking to me about linebackers, um, being a little oh, bit yeah, of something like. Shit. Is there anything in the actual gameplay while playing a actual game where you're like, no, this is fucking stupid. Why am I like? Why is this happening? Uh, besides the fact that uh, linebackers literally can't guard anybody. Like, obviously, you know, mm-hmm. and that's not even, like, with man coverage. That's, like, doing yeah. zone, where they literally have to stand in one spot, like, half mm-hmm. the time. I don't know if I'm just dumb. Yeah. You know, which is a very strong can A very, mm-hmm. very strong chance. But, like, it feels like the linebackers don't go to where they're supposed to. Mm-hmm. Because, like, for instance, I'd have a zone, like, like, dead center in the middle of the field. Or, you know, like, in the middle, so, like, you know, you can't hit us with a slant route. Mm-hmm. Nah, no one's there. Yeah. I mean... It's like, okay, the where'd thing, you go? The thing I did tell you was I read something where they changed linebackers a little bit this year. Um, where it was something to where last year it felt like... And it was. Linebackers were ridiculous. You went to throw it over the middle, and it was like linebackers were making interceptions and deflections to where you're like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Like how, that, that interception shouldn't even physically happen. What the fuck is this shit? And I feel like hearing you talk about linebackers now, it's like, Oh, they corrected the linebacker. They just did an overcorrection to where now it's like super easy to where, Oh, I can throw it over the middle and a linebacker is not going to do anything to it. Yeah. And, and it's even at that, it's like, I have fast linebackers. Like, mm-hmm. that's the thing that annoys me is, like, yeah. they They're just like, get my burned. My players by... are good. They're good. I swear. Yeah. Like, because my slowest linebacker mm-hmm. is Hightower. So, like, yeah. I don't expect him to fucking be chasing people down. But, like, I think I have, I think his name's Jalen Smith. Mm-hmm. Sorry, by the way, I also have to specify for people out there, I don't watch football. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know, like, jack the shit about players. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, I think it's, like, Jalen Smith, and I don't remember who my other two are beside Hightower like mm-hmm. but I think 
I think it's Hightower's my lowest speed, which I think he has like an 80. Mm-hmm. And it's like my bad, other though. two. Yeah, my other. I think Jalen Smith's my fastest with an 85. I think mm-hmm. my right. I think my right linebacker is 83, and I think the other one's like 82 or something like that. Okay. And literally, just they get fucking burned by everyone, even people mm-hmm. with slower speeds than them. Yeah, and it's just here's the thing when going into like Madden 21, and here's the problem with the Madden games right now. We even see it like you brought up um, before the show with Dave. We even see this with 2K. When there's no competition, where are people supposed to go? Like, there's an article from um, from Polygon. This was way, 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 way back in uh, March, simpler times before quarantine, um, where 2K is going to return with an NFL video game, but it's oh, not no. going to be a Madden competitor. That's the thing, where everyone's thinking it's going to be like an NFL street um kind of thing kind of like when they did um uh M- like NBA 2K playgrounds um that's what th- everyone's thinking this football franchise is going to be for 2K but like in my mind you're not going to get the change that you need out of a company like EA unless they have a competitor and if there's no competitor it's just like all right we're not going to like, we're not going to do it. We're look at the other, the other sports. Think of first off baseball. They had a baseball game. It was actually a really good baseball game um, from EA. I liked it. But when the show came out, the show was just so good to where it's like EA is like, okay, we're not going to make that game no more. We're not going to pump money against that competitor when they're clearly better game. You look at NBA I don't know if it was something where EA thought that 2K was winning the market more, but EA for a while dropped off from NBA Live. They stopped making NBA Live for a while. They came back a year or two ago and I think made um, a a live game, but like there hasn't been a competitor, a big competitor to 2K in a while. And how many people bitch about NBA 2K every year? So it's like, unless there, there's only two things that are going to change this one there's a new like a new competitor enters the field and says no we are going to make a Madden competitor the only other thing that's going to get changed is if people actually not buy copies of Madden which will never happen because sports fans love their football and I don't think there will ever be enough people to not buy the game to make the NFL and the owners go oh wait we need to change this cuz our income our income is now affected because of the game sales. Yeah, and especially because I think it was on an episode of Games Live, I think we mm-hmm. talked about how when uh, when 2K was making that football game, mm-hmm. the first thing that popped in my head, I'm like, I'm like, God damn it, dude. I'm like, I'm tired of EA and 2K competing. Like, could there and be it's because else? It's, I mean, I can't think of another company, but, like, the reason why, like, I was saying, like, like I don't want these two to compete is, like, I'm so fucking tired. Mm-hmm. Of it being, like, just... The problem I have with sports games, and this is the reason why, like, I genuinely just don't like sports games. Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, you know, it's people can use the same argument for, like, oh, Call of Duty's the same game every year. It feels different enough mm-hmm. to warrant buying it. Yeah. Like, 2K20 felt exactly the fucking... Like, it felt... The only reason it feels different is because it's technically, like, it's, like, three games in the future. It doesn't feel that different than 2K17. Mm-hmm. And, like, obviously, I loved 2K17. But it's one of those things of, like, it just doesn't feel the same anymore. And this is where, like, I hate that, like, companies like 2K and EA are the ones who are, like, trying to kind of sweep over the gaming market for Mm -hmm. sports games. Because it's, like, it's the same monotonous shit over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, okay, you guys aren't focusing on what people want because they're like, oh, we're going to put these story modes with these cutscenes that we're going to spend a lot of time on. It's like, no. I'm playing a sports game. I'm not playing like fucking Last of Us. I don't want yeah. cutscenes. Well, I want you guys to improve the fucking gameplay. To where it's like that's when you talk about the story mode. And I even was like iffy about the Madden story last year of like when I do a career mode, I do not want to play through a story. I don't want a story dictated to me. I want to basically I want to make my guy. I want to be the best I can be. And I want to win Super Bowls. That's what I want. Um, And the one thing that 
I feel like maybe it was because I was a kid um, and there was more of like, I still have an imagination. Don't get me wrong. Um, but like, it was more of an imagination where I remember playing the ESPN 2K NFL and basically like, I would kind of create stories in my head of like this, this Vikings team with coach Widmer at the front of it. And they're just a juggernaut force. And it's like, I I didn't need a game to dictate me a story in a career mode, in a franchise in order to get me invested in the game. You want to know why I buy the game to play fucking football. All I want is a clean football experience with new things added to it. And it's like, are we almost at the point of like, there's no more innovation or there's no pressure to innovate things because there's no competition. Yeah. And I think the, there's no pressure Mm -hmm. because like, obviously, you know, the X factor thinks it's interesting. Yeah. It's just one of those things that were like, obviously they're massively toned down this year. Yeah. Way too overpowered last year. Yeah. This year they're really toned down. And like, it just kind of makes me sit there and be like, okay, now they just kind of seem like shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like, well, and obviously, it may just be like, for instance, like I have Lamar, uh, I have superstar MVP Lamar Jackson mm-hmm. as my card, which he's arguably the best quarterback in the game. Yeah, I mean, he is the cover athlete. Yeah, but it's uh basically the like some of the first sets you can complete were uh superstar packs, mm-hmm. where it's basically uh like for instance they have like Tyler Lockett, Tre'Davious White. And, pe- and people like that, and you combine those, like, 86 overall cards into getting an 89 player. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if it's just, like, I just never get Lamar Jackson's takeover. Yeah. Or not takeover, X-Factor. Sorry, takeover is 2K's thing. But, like, it's just, it almost doesn't feel like it has an impact. Because mm-hmm. you have to do and, a certain thing on the field to even unlock it. Yeah, because his is like you have to run the ball five times with him, which I'm like, okay, you know, that's fine, whatever. Like, he's a mobile quarterback. I get Mm -hmm. that. And it's like, but I don't want to run that much with my quarterback. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why, for instance, uh, if whenever they come up with a better card than Lamar Jackson, I'll definitely probably be selling him. Yeah. Because I'd rather have, like, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, it all depends on what kind of a player you have to, uh, that you want to even play with. And, like, that's the thing where it's like I even tried last year to do maybe it's because I got into it too late and I was like, oh, I'm going to try um doing the ultimate team for Madden. But then it was like I'm doing it and I'm just like, you know, what I'm going to go back to MLBs. It's a lot. It's a lot, a lot more cleaner. Like the menus to me were a lot more cleaner to where it's like, I don't know, Madden to me. I probably, like I said, won't be buying it this year. Um, we'll see how long that lasts because like, thank God I've got games to keep my attention off of it. Um, to where I don't crumble where it's like Avengers right now, while it's going to be out in October. Um, after that, the PS five. And at that point, it's like, that's another thing. Why buy in less Madden as like a free gen upgrade? Why would I buy it right now? If by that point it's like, I'll just, if I do get it, if I do crumble, it would be well after I have a PlayStation 5 and I have no reason for a PS4 game. But any kind of final thoughts on this, Soapy? Is EA, because right now they're locked through till 2026, will there be a shakeup where the NFL breaks that contract early? Or do you think Madden all the way through 2026 will happen? And then maybe after 2026, we get a new competitor to kind of enter the field. I think it mostly just depends on how the EA handles the rest of the year. Cause like, obviously, mm-hmm. you know, I always do hate giving excuses for like games that are really bad at launch, but it's like, it's something a lot of these issues the game has right now is stuff that can mm-hmm. be fixed. Yeah. Cause like, for instance, the thing I've noticed, and I don't know if it's just cause uh, my old, old Betsy, my old Xbox can, uh, sometimes struggles to run the game or something i don't know you know it's like the menus feel clunky like that's something that they can fix like you can adjust like how linebackers feel throughout the year you can adjust Mm -hmm. x factors and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and that's stuff that i'm kind of like okay you know i can accept that as a thing of like okay you know you can change stuff Mm mm-hmm and obviously i think probably halfway through the year if they don't fix it i think 
it really then depends on what happens next year. Because mm-hmm. like <clears throat> obviously next year could be the make or break year is what you're saying. Yeah. Like, obviously, I know it's only technically at that point, like, what, two years into the contract then? Or technically one year? Well, I mean, the contract was supposed to end after this year, I believe. It was supposed to end after 2020. They renewed it a year early. Like, basically, the Donovan Mitchell taking a contract before his um, last year, I think it was supposed to expire after 2021, but they re-extended it this year. Okay. So, yeah, it's... Like, I really think it's going to be how, and especially, I think other companies just need to step up and, like, just talk to the NFL and be like, hey, listen, Mm -hmm. we'd be willing to make a game if you give us a license. Yeah. Like, obviously, the, I mean, honestly, I don't know if the NFL actually cares Mm -hmm. who makes their game as long as someone does. Yeah, I don't think Because if they cared, EA definitely would not be making it anymore. And it's plus, like, you think of the different sports games, like, what, if it's not EA, it's 2K? Like... Yeah, and I'd hate that, too. The only other studio that I can think of that makes a sports game that is not those two is San Diego Studios, which is the show. Yeah, and I think there may be, like, a smaller developer out there that I think mm-hmm. could stand up to it, because obviously, like, San Diego Studios isn't that mm-hmm. big of a studio, because like no. I think the only thing they make is MLB. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I think it's as soon as... Like and for instance, if the NFL cancels that contract, I would straight up say like, don't give it to 2K, don't give it to EA, give it to a smaller company. Yeah, give it. And some, the only reason give I it say to don't somebody, give it to 2K, give it to somebody that's going to want to prove themselves. Yeah, and the reason why I say don't give it to 2K is because you literally would just be going right back into the same trap. Yeah, just with a different name. Of. Yeah, it's basically because 2K is basically just a fancier EA at this point. Mm-hmm. And that's something that it's like, that's why I hate with sports games. It's like, okay, you play EA, like you play like Madden or like NHL or Mm -hmm. FIFA or whatever games they make. It's like, okay, you can tell it's an EA. When you play 2K, it's like, cool, I can't, I basically can't play the fucking game unless I grind for 5 million hours or if I spend a hundred dollars. This guy brings up a good point. He says, give it to someone who actually gives a shit and will care, not just see a cash cow. And like, 2k would be just another cash cow the only problem yeah. is i don't know like i wish i could say this is the answer give it to this studio i can't like i don't have a name out there of a studio that i feel like it'd be perfect they would give a shit they would care unless a studio steps up to the nfl like you said and says hey we want it give it to us we'll care we'll make the fans happy and we'll make you money yeah, and especially because I think it's one of those things of right now with, and obviously this may sound like a weird take. Mm-hmm. I think it's if Madden games or let's just say football, because let's say like yeah. a new company takes over, they can't use the Madden name. Mm-hmm. With if the NFL games are good, I think you bring in more fans because it's one of those things of like there are people who don't watch NFL like me. I don't watch the NFL anymore, mm-hmm. and it's not because like I don't like the way the leagues ran or anything. No, it's just I just personally don't find football that entertaining to watch. Yeah. But like for instance, it's I like playing the Madden games because I like football. I just don't like watching it. Mm-hmm. You may bring in more fans like me at that point of mm-hmm. people who are like, oh, well, I've always wanted like I've always thought about watching the NFL. Like I see people talk about it. I see it's one of the biggest sports leagues. Let me play the video game. See if I like how it feels and everything. Yeah. I think it's just right now, just e- EA just is in this. I don't want to say rut because I don't think mm-hmm. EA is going to have like some fucking renaissance if they lose Madden. Mm-hmm. But like if they lose the license to basically their biggest cash cow. That would shock them. We, yeah, we definitely see EA actually start giving a shit. Yeah. I mean, and, because... that, and that could trickle into things that also get shit on by EA, like uh, the Star Wars games. What was it? Uh, Battlefront? That's the EA one, right? Yeah. Well, to be fair, I will say, I will fucking, I will defend Battlefront 2. That game is actually fun as fuck now. It still gets shit on, so... Now! It still gets now. shit on. Now! I know. Well, it got shit on at launch, because EA is fucking EA, and they're mm-hmm. like, alright, loot boxes for days multi-transact it was that was when we were doing too old the game and it was basically like multi-transactions baby yeah and it's and like this guy brought up you know it's mm-hmm. fifa's also their major ca- is another one of their cash yeah. cows 
if we see the NFL drop EA, I think we could also start seeing other sports companies, mm-hmm. like the NHL being like, hey, our games don't sell well under you. Yeah. Especially because, I mean, dude, I've played the NHL games. They're mm-hmm. boring as fuck. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I do think hockey's a boring sport. Yeah. Like, straight up. Like, I, I say the same thing about baseball. Mm-hmm. I don't even consider golf a sport. And, like, it's just, hockey's just fucking boring to me. Yeah. The only fun part is the fights, and they don't even like it when you fight. I'm going to ask a weird question. And this is going to be the last thing before um, we go on into the next thing we're talking about. Is... Could we see a situation, we talked about Sony looking for more like um, more developers to bring on for their own. Do you think we could see something where Sony thinks, huh, we see potential in this developer that wants to make a sports game. We're going to bring them on into our um, team, but then we're going to basically go after the NFL and say, hey, we want to make an NFL game. Give us the contract away from EA. We've got this great studio that we've just acquired. They're going to give it the love and attention that it deserves. We're going to make you a lot of money because that's really all the NFL cares about is making money. Could we see something like that and have it to where the next NFL game that is not EA is like what the show used to be, where it's like, oh, it's owned by a Sony company, it's only on PlayStation, or oh, it's only owned by a Microsoft company, therefore it's only on Xbox. And uh, it, we would basically see. Oh my bad, sorry, you can finish. I was just gonna say, is that something that either Microsoft or Microsoft or um, Sony would be, even be interested in doing to try to c- capture a stranglehold? on a big, big property of the sports market. I think the only problem with doing that, though, is, for instance, like, people can still technically make MLB games. But it, it, it's really, it wouldn't be the quintessential. Well, like, it wouldn't be... Made. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. Well, because the reason I'm saying, like, because with the NFL, you can straight up, you have to have the NFL's contract to use their players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think at that point, that's when they could start, like, if either side does it, the other side could sue them and say that's a monopoly. Mm-hmm. I think that's the only reason why Sony and Microsoft will never put their like basically dip their toes into the sports realm okay. with doing that because the uh, that kind of gives the other side leverage to be like, hey, no, that's a monopoly. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. So, like, I could see them taking on a studio and doing it, mm-hmm. but like, I don't think you'd be able to make it an exclusive. Yeah. And that's just because unless if the NFL starts giving contracts to everybody. Well, I mean, they gave, I would say that they gave a contract to 2K. 2K is using NFL players. It's just not going to be a Madden competitor. So, like, yeah. it, it would be basically would Microsoft or Sony want to take on a studio under their own and try to get the license to be the Madden maker? To where it's like Madden is only on PlayStation, Madden is only on Xbox. Yeah, the only thing is, though, I think with football, I think it's too big of a sport to do that. Because, mm-hmm. like, obviously, I know you can make the same argument for baseball, but it's like, I've never agreed with the whole baseball's America sport. I don't agree with it, because I don't even think it's the most popular sport in the States. It, I think it used to be America. Like, it used to be considered America's sport. <clears throat> now things have and changed, now obviously. Is. Yeah, things have changed, obviously. Yeah, it's just I don't think that either company could pull something like that off. Mm-hmm. And I think it mostly would just be an endless clusterfuck of, oh, our game's better or no, our game's better. Mm-hmm. And also, plus, I really don't think that NFL would want to pick a side with that. Yeah, because they realize they'd be losing money mm-hmm. because, like I've said with exclusives before, you make more money releasing your game on every platform. Mm hmm. Good point. And I think the NFL at that point would be like, no, there's no exclusivity to this. Yeah. Um, moving on, Soaps, I'm going to do something. The next thing we're going to talk about, I'm going to push that to shorty but a goody. Um, okay. Because I was going to talk about Avengers and kind of like my first takes, but I thought I'd be able to play a little bit more before today. Um, so the Avengers news we're talking about, we'll do in shorty but a goody. But that means we're moving on into what you want to talk about, Soaps. 
According to wow. Joe Scribbles of IGN, No Man's Sky's developer working on wow. huge, ambitious new game. Here's what it says. No Man's Sky developer Hello Games has a portion of its team working on a huge, ambitious new product. In an interview with Polygon, studio founder Sean Murray explained that Hello Games is now made up of 26 people. Three have been working uh, on new Hello Games games short the last campfire with the 23 split between working on new updates for no man's sky and a brand new project which murray calls a huge ambitious game like no man's sky he also made he made it clear he also made clear that it isn't a sequel soapy what are your thoughts on this good bad excited not excited because no Man's Sky kind of had the, uh, on my view, because I didn't play it, basically the destiny formula of, so Mark Webber, really big on No Man's Sky, bought it when it released. I remember asking him about the game, and he goes, there's not really a lot out for it. It's not what I expected. It kind of was a dud off the front, but like as they started adding updates, people were like, holy shit, this is actually a fun game. Because of that, are you excited about this huge, ambitious project? Fuck no. And the only reason is because I heard the same shit when No Man's Sky was coming out. Oh, it's mm. ambitious. This is gonna be the this is gonna be the game that shakes the market. The game came out and it was hot ass. I, this guy even says, "Hello, games making a new game. Should I pre-order 2.0 for it? I also get the game they promised, not the price, not the piece of shit." Um, that will be launched like No Man's Sky. Like, it's... no Hello Games should basically realize at this point, don't hype up anything you do. <laughs> because, like, I'm not even trying to, like, shit on the devs. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I, I have always said, you know, like, oh, you know, obviously, it's more of the marketing that, di- that fucks up a game's launch. Like, mm-hmm. you can hype up your game. Stop doing the, oh, it's ambitious. If we've never seen a game done like this. All right, yeah, cool. You want to cap your game to No Man's Sky launch. There you go. His exact quote was this, Soaps. I think about it a lot, and I don't know where I come down on it. Um, there is really a positive thing about talking about your game a lot, where you get people interested in it who haven't uh, played it otherwise. But I look back, having done a lot of different press opportunities and things like that, and I reckon about half of what we did and a lot of where um, we had problems, I think where we were naive. We didn't really need to do, and we would have had the same level of success, you know? Um, So he's kind of talking a little bit there about the No Man's Sky um, kind of blunder, but like... Yeah, I saw this, and I thought the same thing. Without even playing No Man's Sky, I was like, all right, I'm skeptical about this. I'm skeptical. And do you think it's going to be in the same vein as No Man's Sky, or is it going to be a different game completely? I I have no idea. It's because I, I just do briefly want to touch on, you know, this is more of a, like, this is me basically giving a PSA to people if uh, you're going to do public speaking with gaming. Mm-hmm. Don't promise anything. Literally, just don't promise anything. Don't it's promise it it's... unless you know you can back it up. Yeah. Well, because everything we heard from No Man's Sky is, oh, we promise this is going to be here. This mm-hmm. is going to be in here. We get we get to launch, none of the shit we're promised is in there. Yeah. Like, the multiplayer, we're told, they're like, oh, you're going to be able to explore the stars with your friends. Like, oh, okay, wow, cool. And they're like, the most the multiplayer was, was you could see that someone named fucking a planet like Dingleberry 44. And it's like, wow, dude, I can't believe it. I can't believe I fucking found Dingleberry 44. What a great planet. Dingleberry 44. Like, this guy said it was a great game, but or it was a fun game, but zero content at launch. And, like, that's the problem with those, like, open sandbox world kind of games. You have to make sure there's enough for your player to do at launch. Yeah, and it's and it all ties into the fact of when you have also just with the fact that No Man's Sky is such a vast game, mm-hmm. like the va- like the scope of it is what is still impressive about it. Mm-hmm. It's the execution is where it's like okay, yes, I get to explore planets. It takes me like fifteen fucking minutes to get to a planet though, and it's like and obviously you know I understand 
you know, you got to put some cap on how fast you can go. Mm-hmm. Like, it just feels like, how do I want to explain it? It feels like there's too much of where it's the, oh, we're going for realism over the entertainment side. Because, like, obviously, I'm not saying fucking just instantly teleport to a planet, because that'd be stupid. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, it's like, look, all right, I'll use an example of a game that came out recently. Like, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Like, that thing. Like, you're fl- the, you are simulating flying a plane. That it, it should not surprise anybody that it takes fucking, like, 50 years to do anything. Yeah, because it's like, holy shit, I'm actually flying a plane here. Which, I will say, since that game came out, they've been saying that the, uh, the flight stick controller is, like, selling out, like, hotcakes. Like, everyone is trying to get a flight stick controller for that game now. Yeah, and it's the problem that I will always have with Hello Games, and it's not just specifically them, but just more of how they handled it, Mm -hmm. don't in any way, shape, and form just try to dust off the fact of how shit No Man's Sky was at launch. Just own it. That's the yeah. that's the best advice I can say. Just own it. Own what you fucked up. Yeah, it's as long if the more you deny that you fucked something up, the more it's going to come back and haunt you. Yeah, because it's the fact that then it's going to be, oh, how am I ever like? How are we supposed to get past this if we don't say like you know? Oh, we learned from our mistakes, and obviously you know mm-hmm. he did admit that there. Yeah, but it's also they need to understand as a smaller company as well, you can't have blunders like that. Mm -hmm. They're honestly lucky they were able to fix No Man's Sky because, if I'm going to be honest, other small companies wouldn't have been able to come back from that. And, like, that would have been something where it's like, okay, I'm burned once, not again. Not again, I'm getting burned. Like, because me, I haven't bought Destiny again. Fuck it. Like, I got burned once, I ain't getting burned again. Bungie not selling me a complete game off the front. Fuck it. I ain't buying that piece of shit again. I mean, it's a really good, it's a really good game, but like, I get it. I get it. I, yeah. Activision, Bungie, whichever one it is, fuck them. Not going to play. Yeah, I mean, they both make the game, but yeah. it's, uh, Activision's the one who made them push it out. Cause, uh, good point. Good point. Good correction. Cause Bungie, uh, don't want to throw blame at them if they're not the reason why. Yeah, it's, and it's something that, cause I mean, I'm, I guess if I want to keep it with the whole thing of like, mm-hmm. especially, because I can kind of tie this into my point of uh, where with Bungie, like for instance, it's a bigger company because they made the original Halo. It's like all the way up to Halo Reach. Yeah. I know. Oh, can you still hear me? Yes, I. You dropped out for a second, but I'm. I hear you now. I didn't okay. know if that was a you or me. I got a little nervous there for a second. <laughs> yeah, just had to make sure. But uh. <laughs> It's like when cut when games companies like Bungie mm-hmm. fall under like a new umbrella of a company and yeah. like you see their business model completely change. It's like, okay, that's Bungie or that, like that's Activision making them do that with such mm-hmm. a small company like Hello Games. It's they really, really need to set a good precedence. Like, I'm not saying like, oh, only release like small games, stuff like that. It's like. You gotta build up the trust of the players. Don't go mm-hmm. from one ambitious title that flopped yeah. to another ambitious title. Mm-hmm. It's in between large titles. You need to kind of play it safe. Yeah. Unless you're like a super well-established company that you could take like two years off mm-hmm. and not develop a game. Like, and that's why, like, because for instance, like with Halo, it's there was always like, I want to say like three to four years in between each Halo game. Mm-hmm. Bunch you could afford to do that. Because they had solidified themselves as like, okay, Bungie can do no wrong company after Halo 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And obviously with Destiny, it's not the same anymore. Because Activision's uh, the shittiest goddamn company ever. But are that's, they? that's different, right? For, yes. Are they, di- are, are they so bad? They are worse than EA. Dave. They are worse than EA. But- I will stand by until the day I die. Activision is the one company I actually wish would fail. Any final thoughts on this before we move on? Fuck Activision. That's it. That's all I got. It's yep. like that's all I've got. Yep. Um, so we've got two more things on the docket. Shorty but a goodie, but it's not really that short, but they're all goodies. Um, number one, we had a September 1 
launch day war table for Avengers Endgame, and it was announced via a trailer soapy that we are getting Kate Bishop that in in its September 1st launch day war table, Square Enix and Crystal Dynamics revealed Kate Bishop, Marvel's Avengers first new hero. Kate Bishop and Clint Barton, the original Hawkeye, share similar abilities and powers in the world of Marvel. Both are superheroes who wield a bow and wear purple. According to Crystal Dynamics, Kate will have her own unique set of skills and abilities in comparison to the six launch heroes. But we don't know how she will relate to Hawkeye from Crystal Dynamics previously revealed will come to our Marvel Avengers soon. Um, according to the game's reviewer's guide, a new operation called Taking Aim will appear in late November. Taking Aim is the first step in the game's Hawkeye-focused post-launch campaign. Players will unlock Kate Bishop, who will then help players locate Clint. In November, the original Hawkeye, Clint Barton, will enter the game in the second part of the DLC. Um, while these two heroes could be completely unique, it's more likely they'll be echoes of one another, sharing similar powers but allowing players to have multiple Hawkeyes in the same party. We'll likely learn more about the differences between the heroes as we get closer to Clint's launch in November. Here's my thought about it, Soaps. Um, I don't think these are going to be complete echoes. Like, they're going to be similar, um, but they're going to kind of be similar in the sense of where Hulk and Kamala are similar. Because, like, Hulk is smash, smash, melee, melee. Um, and so is Kamala, in a sense. She's got the huge fist. She goes forward. But they're going to have different abilities, um, in my mind, because in the trailer, one of the things you see in her gameplay is she's got kind of like a teleport thing where she can like teleport to a different area and then shoot to where I don't think Clint is going to have that. Clint's not going to have that teleportation thing. So what are your thoughts? I'll ask about uh, Kate Bishop being the first uh, hero that uh, we technically get announced for Marvel heroes or Marvel's Avengers, I should say. I mean, that's pretty cool. Like, the whole problem is, like, it kind of ties on to the whole, I basically don't know any Marvel characters. Yeah, yeah. and then that's so, why I was like, I'm going to kind of take this, but hey, I want, if you had a thought, I don't want to steamroll completely over you. Uh, I mean, it's mostly just, you know, it's it's a cool concept, especially, mm -hmm. like, if they're going to try to get, like, to show people, like, what they mean by the Echo characters. Yeah. Because my whole thing is, like, I don't see a problem with Echo characters. Obviously, unless they play exactly the same, mm -hmm. that's when I'd be like, okay, like that's not necessary. Like obviously, if they add War Machine, War Machine is he's got to be an Echo character of uh, of Iron Man. They're too similar. Yeah, yeah. Except his ultimate ability is going to be different because he doesn't. He's not going to have mm -hmm. the Hulk Buster. Here's a question that I just popped into my head that I want to ask you. They had in the War Table thing a moment of silence, obviously for. Chadwick Boseman, um, who passed away, Black Panther. Um, my question to you is, if they were developing a Black Panther add-on, or let's say this was the first one they were doing and they haven't started the next one yet, because of what happened, do you think Black Panther is going to get pushed to the top of the list now? Where after Hawkeye's storyline we could see a Black Panther DLC be the next one they go with. I mean, I could see them pushing it up farther up the docket. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, you know, it's... I, I won't say my opinion of what they should do with Black Panther, because yeah. I think I've said in the movie chat, and I think mm -hmm. I'm, like, the only one in the whole Discord <laughs> that I, thought I, the way I did. Hey, I... You can go ahead and say it if you want. I would also give my uh, opinion on it, but I feel like my opinion. Like I told Dave, I felt like when I said it, I almost got attacked for it because it's like, whoa, okay, I'm the only one that was thinking this way. Yeah, well, okay, because, I mean, the reason I was saying is because, like, I guess I would come off as insensitive. Mm -hmm. I was saying, like, I think they'll just recast him. That's what I was and, saying. Yeah, and, and but I didn't want to come off is, as insensitive. Yeah, like, my whole thing is with, with that, it's like there's been actors who have died in Hollywood before mm -hmm. and that have been iconic, like, like, for instance, if Robert Downey Jr. died before, like, they finished his storyline, yeah. do they just get rid of Iron Man? No. no. 
He's too important. Yeah, it's you recast him. Like, uh, it, I, as I was saying, like, I do sound sensitive as fuck right now. <laughs> I mean, hey, when I had the idea, too, I did, too. And I know we're not a movies thing, but I'll bring it into the game side where this guy says, I think they would need to wait on Black Panther so it's not seen on capitalizing on his death. The only reason I'm going to disagree on that is the DLCs are free. The character DLCs True. for this game are free, so you're not capitalizing on it. It's not like it, it would be different if you had to pay for the DLCs. But since this is a game where they said you buy the game, you get any character we release, kind of like an Overwatch style, I would say that it would be the opposite of capitalizing. It would be, hey, we want to honor Chadwick Boseman's memory and we want to give a, a great Black Panther kind of story to this. So it's like, I don't know, this is a thought that just popped into my head of like, do they push Black Panther to the top to be like the next hero that comes out based off of what is happening? Or would you be worried that they're rushing it too much and that they should just go um, with their with their plan in it? Um, And this guy replies, well, new people buying the game to play as Black Panther um, that wouldn't play the game. Like, yeah, but you're going to get those. You're going to get people that didn't buy it. You were going to get people that wait for characters as is I with me, if I was crystal dynamics, I wouldn't worry about it. If you're going to do it to honor black Panther, it's not like they're doing it to sell more copies of the game because the game is sold well and is getting great reviews um, on top of it. But the next two things, Soapy are a little Ubisoft related. First one's kind of just an update that uh, when we talked about Ubisoft um, and PlayStation five compatibility, that, the Ubisoft website has removed a text that said backwards compatibility will be available for supported PlayStation 4 titles, but will not be possible on PS3, PS2, or PlayStation games. So it kind of seems like uh, Ubisoft retracting their statement of um, backwards compatibility on PlayStation. But the other set of news that will be happening next Thursday that both you and I will be watching live, the event will happen at... Um, 10, ooh, it says 10 a.m. Pacific. You and I got to check that because I thought their trailer said 12. Um, September 10th, Ubisoft is going to have their next Ubisoft Forward, their own little showcase. Um, and we're going to get the uh, the release of Gods and Monsters. So I just wanted to bring up this up and ask you, is there anything on the Ubisoft Forward docket that you might have seen that you're like, shit, I can't wait for them to possibly... Um, talk about this, or is it just like a, damn, I can't wait to see what Ubisoft has planned. I mean, it's, right now, it's the only Ubisoft game I'm focused on mm -hmm. is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Right now, right. like, obviously, I know, I think, eh. You think they're well, going to show I something? <clears throat> I mean, probably. I mean, dude, we've seen Did we got Valhalla at, like, every single game thing so far, Good so. Point. Good point. Don't really want to break the streak yet. <laughs> yeah. But but I also think it's just one of those things that we're like, I think we probably see something. Of, I mean, obviously, I didn't take a look at the thing because uh, mm -hmm. I'm smooth. <laughs> I mean, they but, haven't announced what's going to be there. We know that probably um, Monsters and Gods that's been um, renamed to something immortal. I'll have to pull up that name. Um, but they do. They have said that there's going to be uh, some new games there that we haven't yeah. seen yet. I think this is also where we get to see Rainbow Six Quarantine. I think it's what the game's called. It was, we probably see that. that. Well, the reason, well, the reason it's called Quarantine is because uh, it deals with, um, because when they originally announced it, it was before we oh, all okay. went to quarantine okay. for COVID. Me as a non-Rainbow Sixer, I was just like, ooh, like, uh, like, uh, ooh, you're trying to play off of the, uh, the, quarantine aspect of it but i guess they're not well it's because uh rainbow six siege had an event i want to say two years ago mm -hmm. called outbreak okay and uh they're making a they're making like a multiplayer game based off of that event mm -hmm. which obviously i'm more or less of just like i just kind of want to see how it plays i don't intend on buying it because i'm kind of like okay i like i like the rainbow six games yeah I'm like, why would I want to play an event I didn't like as a full separate game? 
the only reason I'd want to is because you get to play with your friends, so... But even that, I'm also, like, the only person on my friends list that actually fucking plays any Ubisoft games anymore, so... And I did find the name. It is no longer Gods and Monsters. It is now called Immortals Phoenix Rising. And we're going to see that at Ubisoft... Um, yeah, we're going to see that at Ubisoft um, forward next week. But yeah, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, like this guy says, I pre-ordered uh, Valhalla last week. So excited for it. I can't wait for it as well because, like I said, right after the leaks came out about it, I had just got done with God of War. So I was kind of on that like same Valhalla Viking, um, that Viking trend, and it's going to be great. Soapy, here's a little bit of a littler one um, that I don't think needs a lot, but I wanted to throw it out there. Rocket League won't require PS Plus Nintendo Switch Online after going free to play. Is this the future? Is this the future of games where you won't need PlayStation Plus, Nintendo Switch Online, or Xbox Live um, in order to play a game online? I mean, it's going to be up to the, the games. Because <clears throat> obviously I think it's... Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft are going to try their damnedest mm -hmm. to still get you to pay for it, because that's yeah. kind of... I'd say, like, that's the lifeblood. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing is, like, obviously, you know, like, you get the big money when you sell consoles. But at the same time, it's like, you get a certain point in this life cycle of, like, okay, you're not making the same money you made at launch. Mm -hmm. Like, you kind of need that, like, steady trickle of, like, the people paying PS Plus is, what, like, $100 a year or something like that? Uh, like maybe a little over. Yeah, about between eighty to a hundred. I I think I just actually fucking paid like I think it's like eighty bucks, is what I just paid for it. Yeah, so like that eighty bucks a year, like obviously doesn't seem that much. Mm -hmm. But like once again, that's built up from every single person on Sony. Because mm -hmm. like I think Xbox charges a little bit more. But it's also you can get uh, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate tied yeah. into it. So instead of like the standard ten dollars you pay a month, you pay fifteen dollars. So you get the entire access of Game Pass. You get like a bunch of extra perks they do. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, I got Discord Nitro for free for three months because of Game Pass Ultimate. So and this guy, yeah, I can use Cha Cha Kid everywhere. And this guy coming in again, he says PlayStation Plus for paid games. Um, PlayStation Plus, no PlayStation Plus for free to play games. Kind of seems like a good way. If they wanted to do it, Soapy, this one's all for you. I'm going to leave this one all for you and how excited you are, because of course I am, because Suicide Squad kills the Justice League is no longer in trouble because of this. AT&T no longer looking to sell Warner Brothers Interactive Gaming Division. Do you think they were ever going to sell it or is this just a, hey, we just want to see uh, what the interest is just in case? I mean, there may have been an interest in it, mm -hmm. but obviously I think like since DC Fandom and they've seen that like people are interested in their game, they're probably like, okay, how about we don't do that? Yeah. No, I, I mean, do you I'm excited. I'm excited. They're not for uh sale anymore. Yeah. Well, cause I was almost going to say like just a really shitty comparison of how uh, th this is a, uh, so uh, this is more or less me just asking like a trivia question. Do you know why Fa Final Fantasy has the name that it has? Mm. It seems like it doesn't tie in at all, but it's because it was supposed to be out. Square Enix's last game. Yep. Ding ding! Look at that. Correct. I mean, I didn't yeah. know that. I was just basically, huh? Final. You Fantasy, could probably guess by the name. We're talking about a company being <laughs> sold, like that. It was tying in that way. Yeah, because it was uh, Square Enix was about to go bankrupt, and they were like, "All right, mm -hmm. we got to at least we're gonna put our last game out." And they were like, "All right, what are we gonna call it?" They're like, "All right, let's call it Final Fantasy." And apparently uh, they've had, like, 50 goddamn Final Fantasy since. Mm -hmm. So, who knows? But, yeah, like, I almost wondered if, like, they considered it because they were like, okay, like, yeah, we have Mortal Kombat, but, like, Mortal Kombat kind of dies off around this time. Mm -hmm. Like, it still has, like, an active scene, but, like, not a lot of people are still buying it because, like, most of the content's already out for it. So they were probably like, okay, like, it's kind of getting that weird in-between. It's like, we're probably not making as much money as we want. And it may just be better to cut ties. And they're like, all right, you know, let's have these two projects like dangling out there. And the second that people were like, oh, okay, cool. We get to play as the Bat Family? That's cool. They're like, oh, we're going to get Suicide Squad game? That's cool. They're probably like, okay, 
how about how about we reel this back in real quick? How about we stop saying we're for hire? Yeah. Or you know, like we're selling. <laughs> we're for you know, sale. Like, see how gonna, it goes. We're gonna be making some money off of these games. So uh, yeah. yeah, I'm very happy because one of the things that when I was like, holy shit, we're gonna suicide squad game. You even said it, so you're like. Yeah, not if they sell. And I was like, oh, don't you put that bad juju on me, Ricky Bobby. Don't you dare do that. Um, last two things for Shorty But a Goody. This one's just an announcement. Resident Evil Village will be shown at Tokyo's Game Show 2020 online. Thank you. I cannot wait um, to get more from that. So uh, Tokyo, Tokyo Game Live show is going to be um, September 27th. Um, they're going to show Street Fighter uh, Five Champions Edition on the 26th. 27th, we'll see some Resident Evil um, coming out for that. Also, we're going to have Xbox there, but we're not going to get the Xbox Series X news we thought we were going to get um, at the show. And then Soapy, yet again, I just think this is just like, a, uh, of course, of course they would try to do this. I'm just going to, I'm not going to read the headline. I'm just going to read the article. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a is an escape, an oasis from the real world, but not for much longer. Starting Tuesday, that was this week, reports The Verge, Animal Crossing players will now be able to download Joe Biden, Kamala, Kamala Harris campaign yard signs to decorate their islands with. Democratic presidential candidates Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are rethinking the traditional campaign, Biden's team started the year off with live streamed events, and now they're taking to a medium mostly unexplored by politics. Animal Crossing New Horizons. Soapy, is this a situation of get my po- get your damn politics out of my games? Get them out of my games, yes. soaps. <laughs> dude, Animal Crossing has nothing to do with politics. But dude, you get to <laughs> real life. I get to put a sign outside that says I get to vote for this guy, and that you should vote for him too. Why can't oh, I do that in Animal Crossings? No, because now people are gonna do this all the fucking time. Yeah, it's gonna be dumb, like, right? It's gonna be dude, dumb, like, right? Like at this point, there's gonna be no fucking way to escape constantly hearing "vote for this guy." This guy bad. Mm-hmm. Like it's. That's the thing I hate the most about election season. And th- like, I'm not to get political at all. I'm not going to fucking I mean, state what sto- side I'm on. This story is to- in this. Uh, you know what? In this election, I don't think it met. Unless you're going to say like you're on the side of Trump, I don't think people care. But the only way people like, are going to care what side you're on is if you say you're on the Trump side. That's the only way. Oh well, yeah, care. And, that, and that's not the case. But like, why? Soapy likes Joe Jargison. <laughs> Big like, government bad. <laughs> like, no, dude, it's just the thing I hate about election season the most mm-hmm. is the constant nonstop fucking ads of like this got bad. Look how bad man is. Yeah, I it's, just yeah, and now it's basically gonna be in a fucking in a wholesome game. Yeah, well, my thought of it is like I understand why they're doing it to get to a younger demographic. Um. But here's my other thought of it is a does Joe Biden realize and this is the part where I'll get a little political um, is does he realize that this could be bad for him and it could be bad if it lands on the side of like, oh, God, old man, Joe, grandpa, grandpa, go back in the go, go back in the living room, watch your TV. You're not cool. You're not going to like you're not you're not getting hit with the cool kids now. Um, like, I have a feeling this might hit with that kind of sense of like grandpa Joe thinks he's cool and hip and wants the young vote kind of a thing. Um, I just kind of feel like it also, sorry, I don't mean to weekend at Bernie's. (laughs) No, not, not that the, the infamous quote from Hillary Clinton in the last one once ago, not getting political. Deplorables. I agree or disagree with that. That's good. The fucking. The fucking Pokemon go to the polls. Oh, that's right. Pokemon go to the polls. I forgot about so why do that. I feel, why do I feel like Biden's about to pull out a quote like that at some point? Uh, he'd have to remember it long enough for that to happen. So uh, there's oh, that. Dude. Oh, but oh, Soapy, if that was not enough to get your blood uh, up a few ticks, this one will. Last thing we're talking about today, little Ridley Scott. 
Ridley Scott flattered by Fortnite's 1984 parody, but didn't love the message. This is the story from Austin, from, uh, Austin Goslin at Polygon. Earlier this month, Apple removed Fortnite from the iOS App Store, and Epic released an update that violated the store's terms and conditions. Epic was prepared for this, however, and launched a comprehensive lawsuit complete with a parody version of Apple's famous 1984 commercial. The original version was directed by Alien and Blade Runner director Ridley Scott, who apparently had some mixed feelings about Epic's homage. During an interview with IGN, Scott, now 82, um, was asked if he'd seen the 1980 Fortnite parody commercial. I sure have, and I wrote them because on the one hand, I can be fully complimented by the fact they copied my commercial shot for shot, Scott told IGN, but pity the message is so ordinary when they could have been talking about democracy or more powerful things. I think the animation was terrific. The idea was terrific. The message was eh. Part of Scott's hesitation towards Epic's message may come from the source material for both the parody and the original commercial. George Orwell's novel, 1984, is a dystopian story about a totalitarian government that predicts or that attempts to control its citizens thoughts and ideas hence both commercials gray uniform workers soapy what are your thoughts on ridley scott's thoughts on uh, this commercial and are you with them or are you not with them i mean i'm with them it's so it's like thing fuck is, epic like, i'm with them <laughs> yeah like the whole thing is like it's a cool concept to to basically use Apple's old, like old mm-hmm. commercials against them. Yeah. But like use this energy for something else. Cause I mean, everyone and their fucking brother that watches games live knows how I feel about fucking Epic and Apple. Mm-hmm. Like use this message for literally anything else. Literally like just put fucking more than like two seconds of effort into being like Apple by it. Mm-hmm. You could be like, Oh, like, Use it as a way to show that, like, the corporate world has actually fucked and how, like, there's exploitation of workers and things like that. Mm-hmm. Don't just be like, hey, we're only doing this because a- Apple Apple mad at us. Well, I mean, and I'm even watching the old Apple one right now. Um, we're basically. Back then, it was kind of like. Because, um, like, in that commercial, it says. On January 24th, Apple Computer will introduce Macintosh, and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984, where Apple was just coming out back then, and it was one of the things where the Mac computer that we know right now started then. It started right then and there. Um, And up until that time, it was PC-owned everything. Windows was everything. Um, And then Apple came out with theirs where this one kind of seems like this commercial kind of seems forced where it's like, we're going to break your terms of service and then make you out to be the bad guy to where it's like, no, they're not like that. Um, Did Soapy end it or did I end it? Okay. That was, that was a you thing, not a me thing. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. Um, to where it misses the message completely where Apple's more was going on a sense of you'll basically have a choice between what kind of computer you want where this one's kind of like, ha ha, you're a bad, uh, you're, you're a dystopian company trying to force me to do what I want. No, you broke terms of service. Ha ha. No, it's your fault. That's, it just seems kind of childish. Yep. And this is why it's 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 just straight fuck epic until the end of this lawsuit. Mm-hmm. And it'll probably still be fuck epic until after this lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, but I just wanted to bring that in because I know uh I know it wouldn't be an MVP games live soap if we didn't talk about Epic versus Apple, right? It, yeah. ju- it just wouldn't be an MVP games live without it. Yeah, it just it just <laughs> wouldn't. 
Uh, but I can't wait until I can't wait till the twenty eighth, so I never have to fucking talk about this again. Watch, and then they'll kick the can down the road, and we'll have to talk. About if it they fucking night. do, I'm done. <laughs> Soapy's like, here's my letter of resignation. I'm done. I'm, I'm done until the lawsuit's over. Um, but thank you guys for watching MVP Games Live. I am so happy, Soapy. I'm 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 honestly happy um, because this was a lot smoother of a show than MVP Sports was or MVP Sports Live was today. But remember, guys. Join the Discord, link down below, or exclamation point, Discord and Twitch. Patreon.com backslash MVP vids. If you want to help support the channel, thank you to our Patreon supporters, um, our Patreon sponsors, Pat Hill and Philly. Sean, um, make sure to follow us on Twitch, twitch.tv backslash MVP vids, as well as MVP entertainment on YouTube. We will be back tomorrow with another jam pack. MVP Games Live. And as always, have a good day, everybody. Bye.